Hi everyone, if you are interested in getting an Apple Mac Mini M1 for use with OBS Studio but cannot decide on the specification to purchase as you have not found the information to make an informed decision, well, I have the information and experiences in using an OBS Studio to share with you. Keep watching to find out. So on the screen, you can see that I have a Mac Mini M1 2020 and I have the 16 gigabyte model and in storage I have 500 gigabyte which is the 512 gigabyte model so I have been using this Mac Mini M1 for almost 12 months now as the time of this recording the latest OBS Studio version is 28.1.2. OBS Studio runs natively on the Mac Mini M1 since version 28. So there is no translation, there is no emulations. This means that it is much more efficient than any other previous versions. All right, so what is the optimum specifications for the Mac Mini M1 to work best with OBS Studio version 28. Let's open up the Apple website and we'll go through all the options available for the Mac Mini M1. So this is the Australian price for the Mac Mini M1. All right, so firstly is the memory selection, eight or 16 gigabyte memory. Let me convince you to get the 16 gigabyte RAM model as extra RAM cannot be added later and you will need it. I would not recommend the 8 gigabyte RAM model for use with OBS Studio as 8 gigabyte is extremely limited. There is no room for any other programs. Let me show you why. I will open an app called Activity Monitor on the Mac OS to have a look at the memory usage what we want to have a look at is down here so firstly have a look at the physical memory is the amount of memory installed on my system which is the 16 gigabyte memory usage up in here is at the moment is 9.75 gigabyte and OBS studio is not even running on my Mac Mini M1. So within memory use, there is app memory, the amount of memory is currently being used by all the applications. Wire memory, 1.26 gigabyte, is actually the memory required by the operating system to operate. Uh, we go down here, we go to cache files. Cache files in my physical memory around approximately six gigabyte. So what is a uh, cache files? So cache files uh, store in like physical memory and that memory was recently used by uh, recent apps. For example, if I were to open up OBS Studio for the first time on my computer, this memory here memory use most likely will go up and as soon as I quit OBS Studio the system offload that particular OBS into the cache memories which is uh, cache files and if I have not turned my computer off if I open up my OBS Studio quit it and open it again you noted that the second time it will open up much faster because it is opening up the OBS instance in the cache uh, memory rather than on the SSD. So this cache file, as more applications open, the cache files will be overwritten. So this cache memory helps with improving the performance when the app is reopened. Now we go down here to swap use. If the computer does not have enough physical memory, it will use the storage, which is SSD storage or the hard drive on the Mac Mini. In simple terms, if the Mac Mini does not have enough physical memory, then the operating system is borrowing some spaces from the local SSD and use it 
as a temporarily store some data while the RAM is busy handling other tasks. Now, uh, if you don't have enough memory, the SSD is used constantly. Uh, long term, this will most likely shorten the life of the SSD as data is constantly write, write and wipe, write and wipe from the SSD. Best to have the 16 gigabyte memory. Do not choose the 8 gigabyte version. Let's just put the activity monitors in the bottom right corner and I will open up OBS Studio. All right, from the count of one, two, three, I will open up OBS Studio and we'll see. One, two, three, click. All right, so it loads up now. So the memory uses now is nearly 10 gigabyte. When I open up OBS Studio. This is version 28.1.2. So definitely the 8 GB memory is not enough. Right, so let me quit OBS Studio and open it again. See this goes down a bit. The memory uses went down from 9.9 uh, .9 to 9.8. Let me open up OBS Studio again. One, two, three. I think it's much quicker than when I first opened it. Exit. I don't need this anymore. And I don't think I need this anymore. I recommend the 16 gigabyte memory. What about SSD storage. May I suggest to go with 512 or if you're on a tight budget, go with 256. SSD storage maybe is not extremely critical as memory as you can add additional storage later on. Just be mindful that the USB and the Thunder port is needed to connect up external storage and the speed of the external storage may not as be speedy as the internal storage. Lastly, networking, ethernet, gigabit or 10 gigabit ethernet. Well, if you have the cache or if you are transferring extremely large files and you have the infrastructure like you have a 10 gig switch or the cabling that's already capable of handling 10 gigabit speed, get the 10 gigabit ethernet. Or if you want future proof, then get the 10 gigabit ethernet anything else no that's about it however let's have a quick look at the comparison of the mac mini m1 versus the macbook pro 13 inch m1 versus the macbook air m1 so this is the mac mini m1 that's the macbook pro 13 m1 and this is the macbook air 13 m1 and let's scroll down into this important area. CBU is the same. GBU is different on the MacBook Air M1. And I believe GPU is very important for OBS. Therefore, I would not recommend the MacBook Air M1, even you get the 16 gigabyte. Another reason is the MacBook Air M1 does not have an active cooling system like the MacBook Pro M1 uh, or the Mac Mini M1. Active cooling means there's a fan to cool the system down. That's it for this video. I hope you find it useful and help you with selecting the right, uh, whether Mac Mini M1 or the MacBook Pro 13 inch M1 for use with your OBS Studio. Let me know if you have any questions or suggestions on the selection that uh, I just shared. Take care. Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.